Well, I think it's about time to start. It's 6.01. All right. It's time. All, All right. right. Well, you want to have our opening prayer? Well, let's, let's do that. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your blessings towards us that we can come and have this class this evening. Uh, even though uh, those who are watching may be far away, Lord, I just pray that you will bless each one, that you will bless this food as we uh, prepare it and enjoy it, and bless all those who are making these recipes at home as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to stick. I promise I wear a mask all the time here, but <laughs> for the class, I'm not going to, so that way you can see my face and hopefully hear a little bit better. Um, I hope you can hear us okay tonight. We're trying out a brand new microphone uh, uh, system for, that's plugged into my cell phone. So I'm hoping that it's picking up my voice better than the cell phone mic was picking up before. Okay. What were you going to say? Well, I just, I just can't wait to eat what you have to... Yeah. <laughs> see, 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 this is, this is like, my job. He's like, hurry up and cook so he can eat. <laughs> this is my job. I'm the official taste tester for all of this stuff. So, so we'll... Well, watch how you make it, and then I'll... I'll then you'll eat it. Yep. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think there's a few here in this room that are waiting to eat it, so you're not the only one. <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, like I said, for those of you who came early, uh, we're going to be doing pancakes tonight, um, as well as a deluxe tofu scramble, which is a brand new recipe. All of these are brand new recipes that have never been on my website before, uh, never been taught at any cooking class. Uh, so they are brand new, and uh, I am just really excited. I am most excited about um, the oat-free pancakes, but um, I was trying to decide which one I should start with first because they're all so good. Um, but I think I'm going to start with the oat-free pancakes because that's my favorite one. Um, this oat-free pancake recipe has been a dream of mine for probably close to 20 years. Uh, I guess it was 18 years ago, I became allergic to oats. And oats are kind of, when you're doing whole grain baking and whole grain cooking, they're kind of your staple. Uh, we like to put them in waffles, we like to put them in uh, veggie burgers, we like to put it in granola, we, kind of, we like to put it in bread, we put it in, um, in pancakes, uh, waffles, all those things, oatmeal cookies, I mean, the list goes on, right? Oats are kind of one of those staples. And when I became allergic to oats, it was like my entire world just completely fell apart. I was like, well, what do I eat? And uh, so one of the first things I set out to do is I wanted to find a really good oat-free pancake. And I have been on that quest for 18 years. Uh, I have tried many, many, many different recipes over the years. Um, some have been okay, you know, decent, halfway decent. Some have been absolute total disasters. I remember my very first, um, I, I was trying to do an oat-free and gluten-free, which is actually what we're doing tonight is oat-free, gluten-free. Um, I was trying to do an oat-free, gluten-free pancake and uh, I was at someone's house and I remember mixing up some of this flour, trying to figure out the right ratios of everything. And I put it in my skillet and it kind of like turned into this nasty, mushy mess. And when I tried to peel it off the skillet, it looked very, very sad. And it was nothing close to a pancake. I don't even know how to describe it. Maybe something akin to like a uh, cornmeal mush uh, with burnt edges. I'm not sure. <laughs> it was kind of nasty. <laughs> um, I've played with uh, other types of um, gluten-free pancakes. I've tried with cassava flour, um, which those weren't too bad. But uh, when I got married, Daniel uh, is my best food critic. I really appreciate him. He was not that way when I married him. He always said that everything I made tasted good. And finally, after like a year, I sat him down and I was like, listen, I want to hear more than my food tastes good. I want you to criticize it so I can make it better. And uh, so he has learned to be very critical of my cooking. And I've been so blessed um, by that because it has really helped me to work harder uh, to make the perfect recipes. Um, but anyway, over the years, I would make this pancake recipe and that pancake recipe. And he'd be like, it's too soggy in the middle or, you know, it's not quite fluffy enough or, you know, all these things. And um, finally, 
Uh, fast forward to this past May. It was Mother's Day, and uh, we were going to be doing our first Mother's Day without a Mother's Day brunch here at the restaurant. And so I decided to make a Mother's Day brunch for my mom and Daniel's mom and my grandma at our house. And uh, my mom had been telling me how much she was craving pancakes. She was tired of waffles. We have a really good waffle recipe, by the way, on our website. Um, which I'll probably never change because it's so amazing. But she had been craving pancakes and um, she has a number of allergies, oats being one of them. And I was like, man, it'd be so nice if I could make her a pancake that she would like. And so uh, I found a couple more recipes that I wanted to play around with and uh, found one similar to the one I'm going to share with you tonight and tried it out. And it was pretty good. Like of all the ones I tried, it was the, the closest to a decent uh, gluten-free, whole grain, healthy pancake of anything I'd tried. And so I thought this, this recipe has potential. I'm going to play around with it more. And so uh, Daniel has eaten quite a few of these pancakes uh, since last May because <laughs> every time I make them, I'm like, well, let's try changing one more thing. And uh, he's always like, did you write down what you changed last time? <laughs> But anyway, long story short, I think we finally hit on it. And so I did one last trial run day before yesterday and fed Daniel pancakes for lunch and uh, he approved. So that is the story behind the oat free pancake. So if you want to see the recipe for yourself, go to our website, www.christinaskitchen.org and uh, look at the oat free pancake recipe. Um, and uh, you can follow along with what we're doing. Uh, have anybody else said anything? You watching the comments, Macy? Yeah, I'm watching them. No one said anything. Everybody's quiet now. All right, you don't have to be quiet. You can keep talking, all right? <laughs> Let me know you're here and watching so I don't get bored. Um, so the first thing is our dry ingredients. So I take a mixing bowl, and we're going to put our dry ingredients in there. And with our dry ingredients, we need get a measuring cup here one cup of brown rice flour and uh, i have tried this recipe with several different kinds of flour um, my mom was actually allergic to brown rice flour so for her i experimented with using sorghum flour instead of brown rice flour and uh, it turned out very nice except that sorghum flour doesn't absorb as much water as brown rice flour does so if you use sorghum flour you want to go slightly heaping and you want to decrease your liquid just a little bit. So instead of, uh, what is it called for? Um, one and a half cups of soy milk. Um, instead of the one and a half cups of soy milk, you will want um, probably like to start with one cup and add more as needed. So there's our brown rice flour. And then we've got a half cup of air root flour. If you don't have air root flour, it's okay. You can use uh, any kind of starch flour that you want to put in there. So you can use tapioca flour. Uh, you can use um, cornstarch if you want something a little bit more uh, processed. Um, those are my favorites. Wow, look at that. It would make a mess. It wouldn't be cooking if we didn't make a mess. So that's okay. All right, so that's our half cup of air root flour. Darlene Adams says, what if you're allergic to soy milk? If you are allergic to soy milk, you can use almond milk. Um, it works great in this recipe as well. Um, John, can I ask you to get something for me? Uh, on the top shelf back there, there should be some uh, one soy cartons of soy milk. I need two. All right, next one is coconut flour. And that one is a quarter cup of coconut flour. Uh, West soy. Now they're like a quart size. They should be on the same shelf up there, hopefully. Valerie asks, is arrowroot powder and arrowroot flour the same? Yes, those are the same thing. Arrowroot powder, arrowroot flour. That's the same name for the same thing. Um, Thank you for asking. You guys are great at coming up with questions. Okay, so next we need um, flaxseed and chia seed. 
And I want to just share with you a little secret of what I like to do at home. Yes, that's them. Thank you so much, John. Uh, what I like to do at home, because most of my recipes, if you probably noticed, I like to use equal amounts of flaxseed and chia seed in most of my recipes. Uh, that is my egg replacer. Uh, you can use all flax or all chia. Either one will work. So if you're out of one or you're allergic to one, it's okay. Just do one or the other. Um, but uh, I have found if you have both on hand and you can use both, they seem to work the best together as an egg substitute. Chia seed tends to be a little bit more gummy and flax seed seems to be a little more heavy. The two of them together uh, seem to produce a lighter, fluffier uh, product. So what I do at home is I take, um, I have a little coffee grinder like this, or you can use a blender or whatever you want. And I put equal amounts of flax seed and chia seed in my coffee grinder. So I'll put like two tablespoons of flax seed, two tablespoons of chia seed. I'll grind it up together. And uh, then I will, where did I put that little bitty jar? I think I hid it from myself. Um, oh, here it is. I'll grab a little, <laughs> I like to reuse these pimento jars. I'll grab a little jar and I'll put that ground flax and chia in there. And then you can stick it in the fridge or if you use it right away, you can put it in the cupboard. And whenever you need flax and chia, it's already ground, already mixed. You just scoop it in and put in your two tablespoons or whatever you need. So that's a little uh, shortcut secret that I like to make it easy when you're in a hurry to make pancakes in the morning. It's just right there in the cupboard, ready to grab, put together. Um, but sorry, I didn't get that done um, when I made pancakes the other day. So here at the restaurant, we keep them separate because we often need different measurements at the restaurant than we do at home. So I've got a flax seed here. While you're doing that, Brenda Morris says, Grandma is washing dishes and just recognized your voice and had to come over and check. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. <laughs> Grandma's eating these pancakes, so she knows what they taste like. All right. And then we've got our tablespoon of chia seed. And let's see, we've got um, some salt in here. And of course you can adjust the salt to taste. Uh, if you want lower salt, you can. Um, but uh, Daniel and I have played with this and this is where we like it. So we got a half teaspoon of salt. I think there's a half teaspoon, there it is. And we're gonna put in a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, if you do not like cinnamon in your pancakes, you can uh, change out that cinnamon for uh, vanilla. There's some vanilla already in this recipe. You can just add one more teaspoon. So there's our cinnamon. And then we're gonna put in some baking powder. And I think it's one and a half teaspoons, is that right? Yes. One and a half teaspoons. And then um, one tablespoon of organic sugar or coconut sugar. You can use either one. Or if you don't want a sweet of a pancake, you can leave it out entirely. Um, what do I have? I don't see it. You know where it is, Mason? What is that? Sugar. <laughs> All right. Is organic that you want? Yes. Can I just get the little one? Yeah, the little one on the counter is fine. I just need a tablespoon. All right, so that is our dry ingredients as soon as we get the sugar in there. And there is a whisk right here. Can you use sea salt instead of regular salt? Allergies to regular salt. Yes, you can. Um, I use Himalayan pink salt. Um, you can use sea salt, and uh, you can use pretty much any kind of salt. But do realize that every salt has a different amount of saltiness. So if your salt is extremely salty, you'll only want a quarter teaspoon in this recipe instead of a half teaspoon, but you can adjust to your taste. All right, so we're gonna put in one tablespoon. Thank you, Mason. All right, so we have all of our dry ingredients mixed together. And 
then we are going to work on our wet ingredients. So our wet ingredients uh, consist of two things. You'll notice there's the buttermilk mixture and then the rest of the wet ingredients. Um, the first time I made this recipe, I was like, oh, well, I'll just throw it all in the same measuring cup. But I discovered that when you put uh, the coconut oil in uh, with the soy milk before you add the lemon juice, it doesn't curdle. So it won't make that buttermilk that you want. So uh, my favorite soy milk, if I am going to use soy milk, I like to use unsweetened soy milk. Um, so I usually use the West soy, uh, soy milk. Um, and like I said, if you can't use soy, almond milk works just fine. Uh, so we're going to put in uh, one and a half cups. What sugar can you substitute? Coconut sugar. Or you can leave it out if you don't want it as sweet. Um, or you can just increase the maple syrup, which is in your wet ingredients. If you don't have much sweetener, the pancakes still won't turn brown. Well, the sugar isn't in there to make them turn brown. The sugar is in there to make them taste good. <laughs> I'm the type of person that would rather have a little bit sweeter of a pancake, and then I put less sweet on top. If you like a less sweet pancake and you like to dump more maple syrup on top, then you just leave it out and uh, you can put it in the form of maple syrup when you eat it. <laughs> but it's entirely for flavor. Okay, so we've got our soy milk and then we need our lemon juice and um, this is going to make our buttermilk mixture. So we're going to put in two teaspoons of lemon juice. And we're just going to stir that in and let it sit. And if you want to see what happens, it, it the soy milk begins to curdle. I don't know if you can see that. See how thick and curdled it turned when we added the lemon juice? So that's our buttermilk. Um, and then the rest of our ingredients, we need uh, coconut oil, which is, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Macy. Coconut oil, we need a quarter cup. And a, I'm going to need a spoon to dig it out with because my little measuring cup won't fit in here. John, could you get me a metal spoon? Just one of those that we use for digging stuff out. So the coconut oil, as you can see, is solid. <laughs> it's completely solid. Uh, coconut oil turns solid at 70, just anything below 78 degrees. So obviously it's less than 78 degrees in here, which is why it's solid. Thank you, John. Uh, so we are going to have to melt this coconut oil and uh, and quarter cup. There we go. Valerie asked, would applesauce be an appropriate substitute for coconut oil? I uh, yes, you can use applesauce instead of coconut oil. I will say that um, the pancakes will be a little bit uh, gummier in the middle. Uh, they won't be quite so fluffy, but it does work. I have done it. And if you're trying to do oil-free baking, that's a great way to do it. Uh, you can also use banana instead of the coconut oil as well. Okay, so we have our quarter cup of coconut oil. And um, John, are you okay with running it to melt it for me? Okay, so while that is melting, uh, there's many ways you can melt it. You can melt it by putting in uh, that little measuring cup in a bowl of hot water. You, know, you can melt it by putting it in the toaster oven for 
um, usually about five minutes at about 200 degrees. It melts it very quickly. Um, you can melt it in the microwave. There's so many different ways that you can melt uh, coconut oil because it doesn't take very much. Uh, it melts very quickly. So while that's melting, uh, we need our vanilla and our maple syrup. So one teaspoon. Now you'll notice my vanilla is actually a powder. I put the vanilla in with the liquid ingredients because I know most people have liquid vanilla. Um, since I have a powdered vanilla, I am actually going to stick it in with my dry ingredients. Uh, but it really doesn't matter if you use powder or liquid, whatever kind of vanilla you prefer, you can put it in. So there's the vanilla. And then lastly is the maple syrup. which my buttermilk is done being buttermilk now, so I can actually add the other ingredients to it um, now that it is sat and gotten nice and thick. So I'm gonna put my maple syrup directly into here. And once again, uh, this is for sweetness. If you don't like a sweet pancake, you can leave it out. Coconut oil should be about ready, hopefully. So that is, once we have the coconut oil, we have all the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients. Um, and we'll be able to put those together. The next recipe I'm going to do at the same time is our buckwheat pancakes. Um, so if you want to pull out that recipe, you can look it up on the website as well. It's called Hearty Buckwheat Pancakes. Thank you, John. Hot. Hot. Wonderful. Thank you very, very much. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead. You wanna pull it in close so you can see what's going on here. Takes it a second. <laughs> okay. You can see what's going on here? All right. So we are putting in our coconut oil and our uh, the rest of our wet ingredient mixture, soy milk, maple syrup, lemon juice, all that. And we're going to whisk it together. And then because we used flax seed and chia seed, but we didn't do it, you'll probably notice, we didn't do anything special to it. We just threw it in the dry ingredients, right? So to help it turn more into an egg, we are going to let this sit. And you can let it sit as long or as short as you want. Um, you can let it sit for uh, five minutes or you can let it sit for 10 minutes, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna whip up the buckwheat pancake recipe real quick and we're gonna start the griddle and then uh, we will have it ready to go um, while it sits. So that's our pancake recipe, number one. <laughs> So while this sits and we're going to let the flaxseed activate and turn into the egg, uh, we're going to go on to our buckwheat pancake recipe. So you'll notice the buckwheat pancake recipe has a lot of similar ingredients, but one thing is different and that is it's buckwheat flour. Um, buckwheat is the only flour in this pancake, uh, which gives it a very uh, solid, uh, hearty, uh, flavor and texture. Um, it's a little bit heavier than our uh, brown rice pancakes, but um, if you like buckwheat, it has a really, really good flavor. So the first thing we need is one cup of buckwheat flour. And I want to talk to you just for a second about buckwheat flour. Did you know there's more than one kind of buckwheat flour? There, uh, There is what they call hold buckwheat and unhold buckwheat. And I know that sounds really weird, but um, if any of you are familiar with the, the little holes or the husks that are on the outside of the buckwheat, um, sometimes they'll make like pillows and they'll, they'll stuff them with just the holes from off the outer, outer part of the buckwheat. Um, anything that says unhold buckwheat flour is going to have those husks on it and ground into the flour. 
There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, it's lots of fiber. Uh, it's insoluble fiber, helps with your digestion. Um, but it's not necessarily flavor enhancing. Well, it is flavor enhancing. It's going to make a much stronger flavor. But it also makes the flower a lot darker. It's going to be a really, really dark brown color. This, on the other hand, is, un is, excuse me, is cold buckwheat, which means the husks have been taken off of it. Uh, you'll notice it's a little bit lighter color. Uh, it makes for a better texture in buckwheat pancakes. And um, it's sometimes harder to find, sometimes not. Now, me, I made my own flour. I just took the whole buckwheat that didn't have the husks on it and I ground my own into flour. But you can get both kinds of flour um, available. So uh, we've got one cup of buckwheat flour and we need our baking powder. I think it says two teaspoons. And we need some cinnamon. And once again, you can put vanilla instead or any other flavor that you would like instead. You can even put like maple flavor in it or whatever um, flavor that you would like. and then salt. And the salt, once again, is adjustable as well. Um, you can put a quarter teaspoon or up to a half teaspoon or anywhere there in between. And uh, you can adjust it to your taste. So then that is the dry ingredients. Not very many, is there? I should have gotten another whisk because I got my other one wet. <laughs> um, so the wet ingredients, we're going to do similar again. We're going to do our buttermilk mixture and then we're going to have mashed banana um, and uh, a tablespoon of oil, which is optional. So this one is very easy to do oil free. Uh, let's see. We'll do the. Thank you so much. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to take your finger with it. So we're just going to mix up our dry ingredients. And then I'm gonna make the buttermilk mixture here. Again, like we did with the other one. Soy milk and the lemon juice. And this one is one cup of soy milk, one teaspoon of lemon juice. And then while that is sitting, we're going to mash our banana. My counter is getting smaller and smaller. Because <laughs> I'm filling it up. <laughs> it's like, where do I put my recipe now? I'll put these over here on the tray. Move my recipe over here. And then I've got a spot to mash banana. Okay. So you want approximately one medium banana and when it's mashed it should be about a half a cup of mashed banana. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? They're getting quiet. You have to talk to me or I get nervous. Although I do have a lot of fun cooking so that helps. might, huh? So this banana is uh, part of our um, egg mixture. And you know what? I just looked at the recipe and realized I forgot an ingredient. So I'm gonna have to add it to my website and you guys are have to pencil it in, but there's a tablespoon of flaxseed that's supposed to go in this recipe. So 
we're just gonna throw it in here. Thank you. So a tablespoon of flaxseed goes in with those dry ingredients, okay? <laughs> and I promise after I get off here, I will go to the website and add that in. Or maybe Daniel will add it in for me. Um, so that way you guys can see it and not forget. So the flaxseed is part of our egg and the banana is the rest of our egg as well as most of our oil and part of our sweetener. So the banana fills a, a lot of different roles. Um, Valerie says, I'm looking forward to trying both pancake recipes. <laughs> Will you be sure and let me know what you think of them and which one is your favorite? Um, okay, so we've got our mashed banana. We need a tablespoon of olive oil. And that is optional. And a tablespoon of maple syrup, which is also optional because the banana is most of your sweetener, so you don't always have to have it. Especially, like I said, it depends on how you eat your pancakes. If you put a ton of maple syrup on top, or if you like it inside it. So I'm just mixing that up inside the banana. That's the rest of my wet ingredients. And we're gonna do the same thing uh, with this recipe as we did with the other one. And that is we're gonna combine, uh, maybe I'll do it here so you can see better. We're gonna combine all of the wet ingredients into the dry and then we're gonna let it sit. So we've got our banana here, with the maple syrup and the oil. Soy milk. And we're just going to whisk all that up together. And it will be a little bit thick. The buckwheat pancake batter is a little bit thicker than the regular batter. If you want it more runny, you can add a little bit more soy milk. And you can see it's a little bit slimy and that's naturally from the buckwheat itself. Buckwheat tends to be just a little bit slimy. There we are. Isn't there a better adjective than slimy as a fish? <laughs> There's no fish in it. <laughs> that sounds really bad. <laughs> I don't know how long that's been sitting. Has it been sitting about five minutes? Yeah, I would say probably closer to like 10. Closer to 10? Well, good, then we can put it on the griddle. So, um, you just take a quarter cup measuring cup and a little bit of oil spray, which it doesn't take much. Uh, this is a ceramic griddle. That's one of my favorite kind of griddles. Uh, it's naturally somewhat non-stick until we've used it so much that <laughs> it starts to stick a little bit. So I just put a very light layer on and I have my griddle preheated to 350 degrees. And then we're just going to take our pancake batter here. And we're just gonna put it on by a quarter cup at a time. Darlene asks, when you add lemon juice to almond milk, does it turn to buttermilk also? Or if you use cashew milk or coconut milk? So uh, as far as the buttermilk, it seems to be, at least from what I have noticed, uh, it will curdle a little bit with all of them. Um, but almond milk does the second best to soy. Um, but uh, even coconut milk and uh, cashew milk will curdle a little bit with lemon juice. Just not as much. So yes, you can use any of those. So because these uh, pancakes for one are gluten-free and they are whole grain, 
they're not going to be as super fat and fluffy as a regular white flour pancake is going to be. But for a gluten-free and whole grain pancake, these are pretty good. I prefer using a griddle as opposed to using a, a frying pan or a cast iron skillet uh, just because I can make more pancakes at once. It goes a lot faster. Uh, but also because a ceramic griddle or griddle in general, uh, even if it's a cast iron griddle on a, on a propane stove, um, tends to cook at more even heat than just a frying pan on one burner. You can see them fluffing up really nicely already. Uh, I never time them, but if I was to set a timer, I would say about three minutes on each side, approximately, maybe a little bit more. I wait until the top is nice and bubbly and uh, looks uh, a little bit dried out on top. So it's not like super, uh, moist and when I flip it over it's not going to go splat. <laughs> so I kind of just go by looks as far as when to um, uh, flip them. Any other questions on pancakes? I'm going to keep these pancakes going and uh, as soon as we get this batch off the griddle I'm going to show you what the, the buckwheat ones look like as well. Um, and while those are cooking I'm going to clean up my mess a little bit and we're going to start on the tofu in between pancakes. How does that sound? What time is it, by the way? Last time I checked, it was 6.38. Okay, we're doing good on time. I'm very happy. All right, I'm going to clean up a little bit of this mess off of here so we have space to work with the tofu scramble. This one's still dry. Yes. Yeah, that one's oily. Are you guys getting hungry yet? I hope so. It would be so fun if one of you, like, decided to make it at the same time as me in the kitchen sometime, you know, just, like, pull out the recipe and, and try making it at the same time, and then you can tell me, like, all your questions while you're making it. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> We just, I just wish we could all be in the kitchen and cook together. That'd be even more fun yet. I have a cloth here somewhere. The other one is called scram uh, tofu scramble. Deluxe. So one is scrambled tofu and one is tofu scramble. So make sure if you're looking at the recipe, uh, look up the one that says uh, tofu scramble deluxe. And it's one of the newest recipes. So on the home page, it'll be on the bottom with the two pancake recipes as a recently typed recipe. Uh, but this is a tofu scramble deluxe. It's similar to my scrambled tofu, but there's a whole lot more stuff in it. I need to flip these before I burn them. I'm going to get busy talking and not flip my pancakes here. Yeah, I am burning them over here. Those look good. They still look Anybody good. hungry? <laughs> they still look good. They still look good? They're Lexi approved. <laughs> I think they look good. I'll, I'll, look I'll eat one for this class. <laughs> You will eat one, all right. One. One. <laughs> I'm not that hungry. <laughs> if she was hungry, she'd eat two. All right, you can see what they look like there. Aren't they beautiful? They smell good too. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could transport the smells to Facebook. Wouldn't that be nice? Like, they could all smell how wonderful it tastes. <laughs> oh. That would just torment everyone even worse. If they could smell it? If they could smell it and not eat it. That's true. But then we would have to figure out how to transport the taste over Facebook. That'd be even better, right? And the nutrition and everything. <laughs> you can if you actually make the recipe. That's right. That's the beauty of it. Okay, so I have some cloths here. Here's my damp cloth. I can wipe off my cutting board. So for our tofu scramble deluxe. The first thing that we need, of course, is a block of tofu. 
And I have two kinds. Well, actually, I have three kinds. Let me see if I can find my other one. Can you grab the other one? Yeah. I'm going to show you the three kinds of tofu that we use the most. And why I use them the most is because they're the ones that are available at our local Kroger. <laughs> uh, my favorite tofu to use is an organic tofu. Uh, also is make sure that it's extra firm or at least firm. You want one of those. Um, but my very, very, very favorite is the Nasoya brand. It seems to have the hardiest uh, texture and flavor um, and it's not so, um, uh, what do you say? The texture of it isn't so harsh on your tongue. Does that make sense? It's like solid, firm, but yet it's soft. Um, and it has a really, really good texture. Um, the other one that our Kroger case, of course, is our Kroger brand, the Simple Truth Organic. And you can use either the extra firm or the firm. And of course, if there's any other kind of tofu you like, uh, any tofu will work in this recipe, as long as it's a water-packed tofu, meaning it's packed in water. Um, and uh, the, I don't know, the, and it's not silken or <laughs> soft. You want extra firm and you should be fine. So we're just going to take this and um, I have a sink here that I'm gonna steal. So you're gonna take your water packed tofu and we're gonna cut it open, drain the water out of it. And then of course we're gonna wash it. Which basically means we're gonna rinse it off. I always just fill the thing up with water and then dump it out. And that rinses off any of the old liquid off the tofu. Are we okay? It's trying to reconnect. Okay, there it is. It's back. They might have just paused for a second. Well, I'm sorry if we paused. We're having internet issues. Hopefully uh, that won't happen again. <laughs> I hope that you caught most of that. Uh, but anyway, we just rinsed our firm tofu and drained it out. And then the next thing I do once I rinse it is I smell it. As long as it smells like beans, it's good. If it smells like uh, manure or rotten eggs, then it's not good. But I think that's self-explanatory. But always smell your tofu, even if the expiration date is uh, recent. I'm going to check Marco these. Says, Hello, finally you off. Yay, Tanya! I'm so happy! Good to see you, too. Alright, these first pancakes are done. How do you like that? Lexi's over here ready to grab one hot off the griddle. I'm just watching. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch you make the tofu fill in your Okay. They smell like real pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> they are real pancakes. They are. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> We're going to get Macy a bad time. <laughs> Let's see, is there two quarter cup measuring cups? Or did only one end up? I think I brought two, but I can go grab another one. I'll just use a third cup. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for calling down. Sorry. Okay, so since you all have seen the brown rice ones, we're going to put the um, buckwheat ones on now because it's been about 10 minutes. So these are what the buckwheat ones look like. You can see that, uh, that's the only way I can say is that it's a little bit slimy. I guess I'm using a third cup, so quarter, I should put less in it. You kind of have to spread it around a little bit uh, with your measuring cup. And of course, if you want, you can always add more liquid too if you'd rather have a thinner pancake. And these smell like banana bread, in my opinion. 
because you can smell the banana. <laughs> I'll just stack them on a plate. Okay. It'll be fine. This recipe basically makes it almost exactly eight pancakes. So that's one buckwheat pancake recipe. The uh, brown rice one has a few more pancakes left. Um, so it'll make probably 10, maybe. Or so, uh, pancakes. Oh, I'm still fat there. So let's see if I can keep an eye on those while I'm working on tofu. So I'm gonna take this tofu and I'm gonna break it up into chunks. And uh, they don't have to be huge chunks. They don't have to be tiny. Just kind of medium-sized chunks. Um, some people like to do their tofu scramble where they just mash it to like little tiny, tiny pieces, but I like texture in mine. Um, so I don't like it mashed to little bits, um, like where there's something to chew on. So what we're gonna do is we are going to put uh, just the turmeric in this. I don't see the, the pepper anywhere. Do you have a pepper out, Macy? We're gonna mix just the turmeric and the tofu because the rest of the seasonings I'm gonna put in the pot um, with the veggies to help season the veggies and the tofu at the same time. Yeah, Macy is. Oh, it's there. You want to tell her? <laughs> I didn't see it. Thank you, Dan. I just didn't see it. Oh. <laughs> You're good. Thank you. Do we need to switch it to data? Live again. I think we should switch it to data instead of Wi Fi. Somehow our internet is having issues and I'm not quite sure why. But I have plenty of data, so if we put on data, maybe our internet will work better. And we're on data? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I hope you guys can still hear me. Comment if you can still hear me, if you're still with me and haven't lost me yet. <laughs> um, usually we don't have internet issues, so I'm not quite sure why it's bombing out on us today, but hopefully that will fix it. So um, we have our tofu broken up in little pieces. We're gonna put our turmeric in, which is just, it's an eighth of a teaspoon. It's not very much turmeric. Just a little tiny bit. Just enough to give it a nice yellow color. And hopefully not a strong turmeric flavor. <laughs> All right, wonderful. I am so sorry about that. Um, hopefully we've got it fixed. So I just take the turmeric and uh, the tofu and I mix it up. So that is all nicely mixed together. And then we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna chop our veggies. So our veggies, we have onion and a red bell pepper. Uh, you can also use yellow bell pepper um, or any other color, orange, whatever color you want. You can even do green if you'd rather have green, uh, but I like the flavor of the reds and orange best. Also the color. Loretta Jones says her husband loved the special from today. Wonderful, I'm so happy. We had a good special today too. We had a cheesy mac and vegetables. Okay, so the recipe calls for a half a pepper. Is that right? I hope so, because I'm not even looking. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a half a pepper. <laughs> so we're just gonna take it and we're gonna cut it into thin little strips. And I'm gonna turn on my pot here to get it preheating. And then I take my thin strips and I cut them in half one more time. So we've got pieces of pepper basically like this. And if you would rather have it smaller, you can make it smaller. Not a problem. What's the pancakes? Done. Thank you. The pancakes probably need to be flipped. What do you know? Glad somebody's keeping track for me. Yeah, Tanya says, I'm backseat cook or I'm couch cooking instead of backseat driving. Don't wear the pancakes. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> and Ginger is asking for the tofu scramble recipe. The tofu scramble recipe is on my website, christinaskitchen.org. Uh, if you go to the home page, on the bottom right-hand corner is a little box that has the most recent recipes. Um, and it should be there. It's called Tofu Scramble Deluxe. There's two different scrambled tofu recipes. Don't do the scrambled tofu. Yeah, you want the Tofu Scramble Deluxe. Okay, so I'm going to take my onion. Well, the last piece of pepper here. And Tanya, I give you full permission to backseat cook. If you want to remind me when to flip those pancakes again, you can. We're just uh, thinly, thinly slicing this onion. A nice small pieces. Did everybody find the Deluxe, the tofu scramble deluxe recipe. If anyone's still having a hard time finding it, let us know. So when you are sauteing onion and peppers, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it with a little bit of oil, which is how most people do it. Um, or you can do an oil-free method where you use just a little bit of water. Um, and with this recipe, you can use absolutely either one. So you'll notice it says on the recipe, to use one tablespoon of oil or water. It may take more than a tablespoon of water, but I always start with one tablespoon and add more as needed. So we're just going to put a little bit of water here. You can see it's nice and warm. And we're going to cook that onion. And the idea is when you're doing onion without oil is you don't want so much water that you waterlog it. You want just a little bit of water to keep it from sticking to the bottom of the pot, but enough, a uh, little enough that it's going to evaporate out. All right, now I'm going to start crying. <laughs> this onion's on. Well, it's pancakes and I'll catch them for us. Pancakes. Oh, yes. All right, here, let's do this. Since these are cool, we're gonna throw them on a plate. I'm gonna seriously cry with that onion directly under my nose. <laughs> and we're gonna take these off now. Thanks, Tanya, you're the best. All right, and now we can put what's left of our pancake batter, which is getting fairly thick now because I let it sit so long. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of milk in it, thin it out just a little bit. Where's 
did I put it? Where else is it apparently? Make sure I don't burn my onions now while I'm doing pancakes. <laughs> Time to remind Christina to start her onions. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, close enough. Good enough. Now remind me to flip the pancakes is what you need to do. Because <laughs> I'm going to forget they're there again. Alright, so we got our onion going. We're going to put our peppers in here with them. She said I'm here with all cats. Thanks, Tanya. <laughs> We're just going to let this cook just a little bit until those peppers are nice and soft, but yet still a little bit crispy. Pancakes are looking good already. Oh, the pancakes are looking good. She says, I like well browned onions, so maybe I was too early. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want the onions to cook more while the, while the peppers are cooking there, so... It's not too early. It was the perfect time. So we've got garlic here. We're going to put in what? Two cloves? Is that what it calls for? Yes. Two cloves of garlic. And these are little bitty things, so I'm going to put in an extra one if that's okay. All right, there's our garlic. And then we've got um, some salt. And we've got some onion powder. And we've got some garlic powder. Yes. Yes. I remember the days when it was hard to find tofu. Um, sometimes you had to go to an Asian store and that was the only place that you could find it because they were the only ones that knew what tofu was. But now tofu is actually quite popular. So we've got our peppers starting to get soft a little bit here. Um, it's going to keep cooking while we add the tofu. So we're just going to put the tofu in. I'm going to turn my heat down. I'm going to burn this. And we're going to cook this for about five minutes or so until the the tofu is thoroughly cooked. I bet you it's time to stir the, to flip those pancakes, isn't it, Tanya? Don't forget to remind us, Tanya. <laughs> oh, perfect. they're perfect this time. You like them better. I like everything burnt. <laughs> well, good. Then you get the burnt ones and I get the light ones and we're all happy. <laughs> this one doesn't want to cook to flip over here. I'm going to chase it all the way around the whole grill. <laughs> it's easier when there's six of them on there. <laughs> all right, we'll get it. There we go. Is that looking good? It sure smells good.
So how are we on time? It's seven. It's seven o'clock. Oh, perfect. Because we're just about done here. So I want to show you, while this is cooking for a minute, I want to show you one more thing real fast. And that is uh, one of my favorite really simple toppings uh, to go on top of pancakes. Because we don't want just plain pancakes, right? Um, there's a lot of things you can do with pancakes, and I might share more topping recipes later. There's some on my website where you can find like thickened strawberry sauce or thickened uh, peaches or different things like that. But sometimes you want something that's really simple and fast that so you don't have to cook. Uh, like you don't want to stand on the stove and thicken fruit or whatever. So what I do uh, is I take um, a jar of applesauce. And of course, this is homemade applesauce, but you don't have to. You can use store-bought or homemade or whatever kind of applesauce you have on hand. And for one quart of applesauce, you put in about two to three cups, or up to four if you'd like, however much you want, um, of frozen fruit. And so uh, we thawed some strawberries and... Uh, you can see once they thaw, they give off a lot of juice. This is just plain strawberries. They were just frozen in a bag. Uh, we thawed them out. And uh, so I'm going to take, um, I don't use my spatula because I gotta keep it dry. I'm gonna use a spoon here. Use my spoon. I'm gonna dump out some of this strawberry juice. I'm gonna keep it though, because we're gonna use some of it. I just wanna make sure I'm not, I don't put it all in because I don't want my applesauce too soupy. So we have our strawberries here. Um, I'm gonna need uh, some way to open this jar of applesauce. I'm gonna turn this. This tofu is just about done here. So while we're getting that, I'm just going to stir it. Tanya said stir that a little more so she could smell it. <laughs> I'm stirring it, Tanya. I'm stirring. And Tanya says pancakes as well. Oh, yeah. I guess it is time for those too. Thank you. Now, Tanya, why aren't you just here? You need to help me. Doris says, I look forward to in person classes. And Sharon says, When are you having haystacks for the day special again? Uh, we have haystacks for our special every Thursday. So, day after tomorrow, we will have haystacks again. And uh, I'm just going to take these off here and just put them. Turn that off. There's our pancakes. And now we're going to open this jar of applesauce. Thank you, John. Or, or Macy or whoever it was. It was Macy, wasn't it? We're going to put in the applesauce into our frozen berries. You can do blueberries. You can do strawberries. You can do any kind of frozen fruit that you want. But strawberries or blueberries are my favorite. Sharon says yummy. <laughs> yes, it was very yummy. And then because um, these strawberries were not sweetened and the applesauce was not sweetened either, it's unsweetened applesauce, unsweetened strawberries, um, to add just a little bit of flavor um, and make it so that this will be basically the sweet topping for on top of our pancakes, I'm going to put just a tiny bit of maple syrup in here. I usually put about a couple tablespoons. And then we're going to put a little bit of the strawberry juice back in because this applesauce is nice and thick. And there you go, homemade strawberry applesauce topping for your pancakes. It's a great way to get real fruit in very fast, no cooking necessary, um, very easy, especially if you have applesauce already on hand, ready to go. And doesn't that just look amazing? <laughs> so, time to dish up a plate, right? That's what Daniel's been waiting for all evening. <laughs> So with this, with this deluxe tofu scramble, you don't have to serve it with pancakes, right? You can make it a breakfast all of its own with a slice of toast. Um, and it's absolutely amazing 
if you serve it with um, some fresh salsa, uh, or you can put, um, um, cheese, yes, there. cheese. You can put like a little bit of non-dairy cheese on top of it if you want. Um, you can use like mozzarella diet sheds, or if you make your own cheese, you can put a little cheese sauce on it. Um, here, Macy, maybe you can put some salsa in a container for me. Would that be okay? Or just, a just a clear one and let's see let's get some pancakes on here put one of each right so we got one or two one where'd the other pancakes go i'm running away without my pancakes here we go so we got our pancakes we'll put some strawberry sauce on it are you guys getting hungry yet Put one more strawberry on there. Make it good. All right, and I think Macy's getting us some salsa to go with that. If you guys aren't hungry yet, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Macy, you got the salsa there? Yeah. Oh, perfect. We'll just stick it right here on our plate. That's mine. <laughs> Daniel's claimed it. <laughs> All righty. Well, that concludes our part one of healthy breakfast. And like I promised you, we're going to do a part two next month. So stay tuned uh, next month, February. It's always the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. that we do our classes. And uh, it's always something amazing that you will not want to miss. So uh, be sure to join us again next month. And of course, uh, Christina's Kitchen is open. We're open uh, Monday through Friday. We serve lunch uh, from 11 to 3. Our dining room is open. Uh, we also do takeout, carry out, and curbside service. So come and see us if you're in the area. Uh, we love you guys, and I hope you have an amazing evening. Um, Daniel, could you close us with a word of prayer? Tony says you're starving me to death, and Valerie says thank you so much. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. You're just going to have to come and see us. And Valerie, I know it's a little longer of a, a drive for you, but sometimes you're going to have to come over too. Uh, Daniel, we'll let you, uh, let's, we'll let you dismiss Let's pray us. together again. Loving Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for all, the, all of this great food that you have given to us, food that can nourish and strengthen our bodies. And I pray that you will bless each one wherever they may be listening. And uh, until we meet again, may you go with each one and keep each one safe. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we love you all. Thanks for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. God Have a good bless. evening. God bless.